Okay, so comets are said to be like one of these really interesting phenomenons that can travel like a very long distance, and depending on how close they get to the star that they actually orbit, it's actually worth noting that every single star or solar system has some sort of unique, you know, um, asteroid belt. And the way the stars work, at least the way um, our gravity works, you know, our sun, Sol, basically you, you have to go like all the way, you have like the inner planets and the outer planets, but then somewhere between um, Jupiter, or somewhere between Uranus and Neptune, there's like another asteroid belt, and then somewhere after Pluto, there's another asteroid belt, and the third one, we're, we'll call it the Oort Clouds, it's way past Pluto, but, and what's really interesting about it is like somewhere within our solar system, there's like roughly like 600, there's almost 650,000, or, or um, 6,500, or 6,500 um, comets that are rounded up, and it's really interesting to think that like, I mean, known comments, because there's so many of them out there. And what's even more ridiculous is to think that, like, for a bunch of cloud, for a bunch of comets that they just travel in a distance, and depending on how, where they're at and how they form, they can be, like, even bigger than, like, they can be just as big as, like, the moon, for example, or maybe even smaller. It's crazy to think that something that fast can also be so cold, hurling through space. I always thought it was really interesting how comets like Halley's Comet and there's a few other ones but I can't remember their names but to think that you know even even like um, by the Oort clouds which is basically where the um, which is basically like uh, two-thirds the distance it is from here to Pluto from what I understand if it's crazy to think that there's like 250,000 comets or something crazy like that that are said to exist in that area it's like space is so weird man like there's so many things out there but at the same time it's just so it's so mysterious like nobody like it's still something flying around out there nobody really knows everything about it and you know you're talking like absolute zero like the temperature is reached to like negative it's not zero degrees but it's like negative 310 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius like I, I'd, I'd have to look up the um, I'll have to look up the um, temperatures but it's crazy to think that in certain parts of the universe it's it's so frigid you couldn't even you couldn't even live up there it's and, and but then at the same time there's bacteria that lives up there and it can survive these car these harsh climates or I'll give you another example you know something that's like really hot like like a volcano you know there's bacteria that can survive lava that's crazy but it, everything's got a different evolutionary product and life's strange it really is but you know talking about facts though we have to we could have to measure things accurately what else is out there we don't know about nobody knows what else is out there except for what else is out there you know life on other planets aliens rocks pit you know black holes supernovas you know how many things are planets moons galaxies universes what is the universe inside of it you know nobody knows you know it's just it's all speculation but like it seems like everything that you know we tell ourselves it's not what we think it is until somebody has facts because people it's you know there's a difference between favoritism and reality you know favoritism being like what people want to hear in their favor but that's why I don't argue with people unless they can provide a good a good analogy you know when you have like all these different you know you have like asteroids meteorites um, comets uh, moons you, you get the idea like these solid objects that are just flying around in space you know like these rocks like where do they come from you know you know like how far and you know and you got planets like that will go flying out of their orbit and they'll land somewhere else like how does like where do they where do they go you know and how fast do they go you know it's it's crazy to think you know kind of reminds me like okay this might be a little funny to some people but there's a video game called tales of symphonia and they kind of had something similar 
where there was a planet that was there the whole time between Silveron and Tethyala, which is the two main planets, and it was called Darius Carlon. And at the end of the game, Darius Carlon eventually, like, ends up separating from Tethyala and Team Sil or Silveron, and so it drifts away in its own, in its own way. And it just goes on its own magical journey. Where it goes to the cosmos, it doesn't know. But it's interesting, though. You know, kind of always made me think about roaming planets. Not just colliding with each other, but just, you know, going out into the cosmos. Like, the planet is a world. And it goes out into the unknown. Where will it go next? It's interesting. And then, you know, you have planets like... There, there, there were planets that were said to exist in our solar system long ago. That got thrown out of their orbit by Jupiter, for example. And at least that's how it goes, anyways. And it's interesting to think that some planets are just really close to each other, so their gravity is, like, well affected. But depending on their coordinates, it could be reversed or pulled into by another planet's gravity and pressure. You know, like Jupiter, for example, is, is huge. And it can crush its... And crush things before it even gets to its atmosphere. And there's been some people that say it doesn't even have a stable surface. You could just fly right through it. Maybe. It's pretty violent on its atmosphere because it's all the storms that have been going on. There's been some storms people have talked about that's been there for years, millions of years. Maybe even longer. Like the great big storm that's on it. Really interesting, the red spot. Um, comets also kind of have something similar where, you know, again, not just the temperatures they shift between, but some speculate that comets could also be the remains of like other planets and moons for example they give off like this really amazing light depending on like how they're they're formed and their and how they shape themselves through the time and space but it's really interesting to think that they can burn up too like over the years they'll they'll disappear and they'll come and go and it's really interesting to think that like, they're, they got, like, a long history. Some comets are millions of years old and they're just flying around in space because there's, like, no gravity. But it's, like, where, like, what is their whole history? And, you know, how are they different between, I mean, aside from mass and, um, their history, like, what really makes them different than other rocks, like moons, um, asteroids, and, and comets? Or, like, just comets in general, like, their own their own um, classification and it really makes you want to learn more about them because it just seems like these kind of things like you know what what other kind of rocks are out there flying around in space aside from asteroids meteorites comets and other kinds of you know because they all have a different orbit cycle they all have a different thickness and it seems like every single comet is unique in its own way with the properties it's made of. Like, for example, like, take different rocks that are found on this planet, for example. They're all different. And they might have actually been, like, take the rock cycle, for example. They all have different categories, like, they could have been created differently. Some of them are found in oceans, some of them are found near volcanoes. Some of them have just been found in the Earth, for example. Because it's a big, giant rock. But it's, like, interesting to think that somewhere out there, though, these rocks could have been part of something else that came far away, you know? And the kind of rock it is could very well explain its own origins. If comets could somehow collide with this planet, not, not to the point where it would destroy the planet, but like, just like a piece of it fell out of the sky somehow and landed on this planet. Like, again, it doesn't have to be, like, you know, you'd have a better chance of believing it would be like a, a huge impact. But if somehow, like, there could have just been like a a part of it that just landed on this planet and somebody found it. How much would it be worth? You know? Be worth something. Because you just can't find these things here. If it was... If you could prove that it was from, like, a certain comet. It'd be interesting to think, like... What kind of... Like, what kind of alien life forms could be on it? If there were any. You know? It just seems... Like, it just... You, you know, there's all these ideas you can think about and... I think, like, what, what, what could be out there flying around in space? Well, the rock's, like, doing this, like, flipping upside down. It'd it really, it really, like, make you dizzy, sort of. But it's, like, it's crazy to think. Some, like, comets can be bigger, and they're really compacted. 
depending on how hard they hit something. They could hit something and it changed its whole cycle. And comet collisions are actually really unique, if you were to think about them.